And uh, we will start with acknowledgement of country. Um, so please welcome Uncle Wayne. Um, he is a an elder in presence at University of Southern Queensland, and I'm very honoured to start today with Uncle Wayne giving his work, uh, acknowledgement of country. Yeah. Uh, Jinger, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Okay, that's no worries. In the language of my mum, the Yukon Bear language, what I would say to you is uh, Jingari, Jingari Wallawalu, Bajra Bujra, which means the good things, which means heart. It actually means goodness and it means a solid interpretation of what country and land is all about. Today, obviously, it's pre tomorrow's debate. And as a 73 year old in the room, thank you, I can, I can do it loud. There you go. As a 73-year-old in the room, I would say to you that I was around in a previous time. If we get a few moments, we'll, we'll talk about that towards the end. But we need to acknowledge the nature of country that we're here today. It's a very important that we look at language, because language is a part of culture, and voice is a part of culture. And we're talking today about student voice and people like Jim behind me and Lucy and others have all of their interpretations and understanding to be able to be shared with you. We need to acknowledge all of those people that have walked this country before. This was a tough part of town for Aboriginal people. And those of you who live around Springfield will know how tough it actually is and how it's been affected by weather, including hailstorms and fire and goodness knows what over time. But it's interesting when you come here that down the road is still Opossum Creek, right? And we have built, and I was involved from stage one, an Aboriginal school, which was independently organized through Springfield and through the university. And we ran for five years the only school in a high rise for Aboriginal students in Australia, right? So we ran it in the Knowledge Centre behind me uh, before we moved down, down the road. So you're in an unusual bit of landscape, but it's exceptionally important that we recognise the significance of country. Country keeps us all alive. You breathe here now and you're going to breathe during the day the DNA of everybody else in this room. We hope we don't breathe the carpet and the bits of steel and plastic that are around us, but we are part of that understanding. And we are in a world where water and land and the sky don't have their own voice. But today you'll hear Lucy talk about voice. I talked to her earlier about the significance to us of what we would call controlled silence or listening quietly. And all of those are components and the power of silence in Aboriginal communities is there. And that's not what you're hearing at the moment, right? So I managed to you know, get through a Peter Dutton interview the other day. I managed to get through all sorts of interviews. But it's interesting that when you're talking to people, the voice that you've got is there. So Aboriginal, in terms of my language, doesn't have a word for voice, right? The word is about throwing sound. Right? That's what it means. And the first word, you don't say this to the grade nine boys, it's the word booger. Right? So booger means to throw. And it's interesting that wayma or wayna is, is the word for voice. So booger wayna, if somebody says that to you, is not the fact that you're going to pick your nose. It actually means quite the opposite. It's important that we recognise that the languages, like all our languages and all our understandings, don't necessarily match. They weave. All, all of the way through. It's very significant. It's very significant that we have plants in the room at any time. So we have an opportunity to see this particular version of a lily pilly, which has huge amounts of vitamin C, right? So those of you that have put up with me doing plant sciences before, uh, but incredible, make your jam, make your play, make you do this sort of stuff. But more significant around this particular campus, you'll find, and sorry, I've made a real mess there, Fanny. Uh, you'll find this paperback, an amazing thing. So this is the flooring of our Aboriginal campsites. This is the gyp rock which forms the wall of our Aboriginal campsites. This is the colour bond which forms the roof of our Aboriginal campsites. So if you come to the country where I've come from this morning, you'll find at Eagleby the trees are still stripped by people who collected bark up until the end of World War I. And that was a business for my mob, for my mum's mob, selling this stuff for roofing, uh, which was used. 
So it's exceptionally important. Antibacterial, antifungal, so it has another use. And this becomes your nappy line of the bowel, right? So this is really interesting and it's environmentally friendly at any one point in time. So an amazing thing happened to me as a part of that component. My dad, like many older men, a man in his 90s, <laughs> suffered from ulcers in his leg. We had the incredible six months of the blue nurses, the multiple antibiotics and multiple whatevers. But this plus, and for those New Zealanders in the room, I'm going to use the word leptospermum instead of, uh, instead of manuka. Uh, but with leptospermum honey, and this is a poultice on the outside. This is a bandage became the saviour for those people. What I'm trying to say is there is a voice out there amongst our students. There's a voice coming through the next generation of researchers. There's a voice that needs to be held at, and shared with everybody. So it's important that we learn not just about silence and not just about listening, but we're heading to a referendum tomorrow. And I'll make a quick comment. I will be very quick. But I was around, I was 17 in the last referendum, right? So to give you an idea of me. So 1967, uh, that was before I got a free haircut, courtesy of the Australian military. Uh, but in reality, what happened to me was a discussion in a country town a discussion that was held around the CWA, a discussion that was held with lots of cups of tea and discussions with churches, groups, etc. There was none of there was none of this. There was none of this at all. It was a really very much face to face person, not FaceTime uh, interpretation of what we had. It's important that we recognize that we've seen all sorts of arguments, all sorts of discussions. The choice of how you vote is up to you. For me, it seems a no-brainer. It always, always was. But it is important to recognise that you need to have a voice the same way as we need to have a voice in the past. And it's very important that it leads into what Lucy is, is going to talk and others are going to talk about today. Our student voice should never be forgotten. The future is in the student voice. So we use the word jarjum as the word for children or, or young people growing up. And it's important that we recognise the power of those generations that are here. Student voice to me, as an ex-principal of high schools, was always exceptionally important. A bit scary for many teachers. Very scary. Very scary for if you're involved in the education department as a senior executive or something. But it's very important to be able to do that. So we started those movements to put students in leadership positions and to spread those leadership positions. And it happened and it still continues on today. So if you look at organisations like Quatsif, you'll actually see that. But we're on here today about country. We live it, we breathe it, we share it. Don't forget the water component of country. Don't forget the salt water component of country. And the salt water component for me is exceptionally important. Don't forget, and it seems in a strange way, but the sky is a part of country. Okay, so I teach sky cosmology and all sorts of things in the bush. And it's very important to do that. I run a range of program where we teach smoke as being part of country. Okay, so we walk with fire at a walking pace. We teach that when we start that fire, we talk to country first. Country will tell us very quickly whether it likes it or not. We then make those clicking sounds that you see with fire. When fire starts, that crackling of the grass. And you watch the insects move, not die. Watch the snakes move. Watch everything. The spiders move uh, that you found this morning. But take those opportunities to see every animal move out of the way of fire. The smoke will help these things, this flower, right? Help the eucalypts flower. So we live in an interconnected world of which my people, the old people that walk this landscape, were part of here before. What I'd like you to do is, during part of the day, take a walk outside, find yourself, there's some paperbark trees down the back side, which is where I got this from, back towards the car parks. Take a moment to actually ingest, not just our own DNA that we're all sharing, but take a look at the animals and plants, take a look at the soil DNA, have a look at everything else that we share. We acknowledge all of those people that have walked before. This has been a landscape of walkers. Take, for example, the opportunities that you've got to listen carefully to others and to share the voices of others 
in a day that where you've got an opportunity to have a Friday, right? It's Friday and, and the weekend coming up. And many of you look like I do. We look like, oh gosh, what an incredible week we've had. What an incredible month we've had. What an incredible three months. Universities are running at a huge pace, right? I don't know how long that we can continue to run at this pace in my mind, but we run at a huge pace. Take the opportunity that country can give you to breathe and take that opportunity today so you may enjoy it tomorrow and the day after and many days to come. Enjoy your day, folks, and have a great time. Thank you.